Hi, I'm Julie from Green Acres Nursery and Supply, and today we're gonna to be talking all about plants that are native to Mediterranean climate areas and why they do so good in our area. So the first thing we need to know is what a Mediterranean climate is. A Mediterranean climate is an area that has very hot and dry summers and cool, wet winters. And fun fact, there are only five areas in the whole world that are considered Mediterranean climates. So of course there is the whole Mediterranean basin where you're gonna find Greece and Italy and France and Portugal and all that fun stuff. But then also the south, the southwest area of Australia is a Mediterranean climate. The very southern tip of Africa over by Chile in South America. And then there's also, most importantly, California. California is one of the only five areas in the world considered a Mediterranean climate. So when you are new to the area, you're having a hard time getting plants to take, looking into plants that come from those areas in the world are gonna do really good in your landscape because they are built for this dry, hot heat and our cooler, usually wet, sometimes wet winters. I know back in the day, an idea of having a plant that comes all the way from an exotic place like Australia or Africa would just be kind of like a dream, but it's actually really easy to do this day and age. And a lot of them you're gonna recognize because they do so well, you're gonna see a lot of them around. For example, agrapanthas. It's also called Lily of the Nile. And if you don't have this in your yard, I can almost guarantee your neighbor probably does. They're everywhere. They get those little firework flowers with white, light blue or purple flowers. But these guys, even though you see them everywhere, they're not California natives, they're from Africa. So they do great, they're easy, and it's a little more common of a plant that you'll see all over the place, and it's for a reason. But there's other fun stuff. There's this one plant, when you see the name, you gotta see it kind of snobby. It's Lamandra grass. But Lamandra grass is this guy. And what's so magical about these things is that they're an evergreen. But at UC Davis, they put these in full hot sun with low water. They put them in shade with high water. It was the same across the board, so you can't mess them up. So if you have not the greenest of thumbs, this will make you look like a planting genius. And you can have them in different areas of your yard, no matter what the sunlight is, and have that one thing that kind of repeats, it gives you that consistency. It's a good landscaper trick, but it's a really good plant. And they also come in solid green too. And there's also a kind of a bluish variety too, but there's a lot of options of them. That's really awesome. This is Dianella, and some of these, like this one, this is the Cool Vista variety, in around spring, almost into summer, you get these cute little tiny blue flowers, almost looks like blue air kind of floating above them. And then after that, it gets this real amethyst berry every now and then that's really cute. But these things, they can handle part sun or full sun. I've seen them in full sun against a stucco wall and do great. Like they can take a beating because they're Mediterranean. Another really good plant is rosemary. So rosemary is from the Mediterranean, but super hardy. This one's a special one. This one's called Chef's Choice. What I like about this is that it doesn't get really big and unruly like sometimes rosemary can get. This one only gets two by two, so it's a good filler plant and you can still use it for cooking, but these are super fun varieties of rosemary to do. Now, let's say you have a really shady area or like a full shade area, but you still want drought tolerant plants. You still have other Mediterranean options because there are shady spots in the Mediterranean. This is the Soft Caress Mahonia. It's drought tolerant. It can do part to full shade and it'll get four by four. And the cool thing is that these guys get yellow flowers too, because it's hard to get flowering things in a lot of shade. But he'll get these little yellow flowers that'll come up um, and it's super neat, super hardy. Another option, if you want to talk about California natives, is Ceanothus. And Ceanothus, I always feel like I'm saving the plant when I plant these just because in spring it gets all these beautiful blue sapphire flowers to it and the honeybees go crazy for it and they're just thanking you while they're all over these guys and these will get three feet tall they can get pretty wide anywhere between like five to 15 feet wide but it's a great plant it's really good for erosion control if you have a slope and drought tolerant plants on slope is the way to go because the water slicks away and then of course you have your classic manzanita California is super known for them, and since California is a Mediterranean climate that we all know now, I do great for this video. So it has that beautiful red smooth bark to it, it has those really cool leaves and they get the pretty flowers, and it means little apples because they get those tiny little red berries, but great, great plant. Now if you need a vine, another really fun one, these are from Australia, but this is Hardenbergia. The easier name is Wandering Lilac, and they get these beautiful little flowers. They almost look like little purple orchids on a string. But what's neat about these is that they are non-toxic too. So if you have a dog that likes to chew on things, 
or a kid that likes to chew on things. It's non-toxic, so that's a really nice thing, but please discourage anyone or anything from eating your plants. I love these things. A lot of people don't know about them. This is called a Feeling Blue Deodor Cedar. And the Feeling Blue Deodor Cedar is kind of like a ground cover. And believe it or not, like this icy cold looking guy is from Pakistan and like Afghanistan. So they can handle some serious heat, which we got here too. But when it grows, it looks like waves crashing. So if you put like a boulder in front of it, it just kind of crashes over and it gives you this really cool sculptural kind of look in your garden. It stays low, it gets two feet tall, six feet wide, but they're gorgeous. But that's another really fun plant you can do. So pineapple guavas are awesome. They grow really fast. These are from, I believe, Australia or New Zealand. And they get this real silvery underside of their leaf. It kind of reminds me of an olive. But then the top half is like a real leathery green. And it gets this really pretty white flower that has a red fringy tongue that comes out the center. And when the petals kind of fold over to where they look like a puka shell, you could actually eat them. And they're really sugary. So you can even put them in a fruit salad as like a fancy kind of garnish and still be edible and be really cool. If you don't eat the flowers, you will get a fruit. Uh, it's the pineapple guava. And it's about that big. And it tastes like a kiwi, but it has the texture of a pear. So it's a little different, but it's not bad for you. But these guys, they can get 10 to 12 plus feet each way. It'll definitely give you a good screening. It's drought tolerant, it's easy. So please like and subscribe below if you like this video so we can get more ones like this one. And if you have any questions, please come to any of our seven locations. We have locations in Auburn, Roseville, Rockland, Folsom, Oak Grove, Sacramento, and Citrus Heights. And happy planning.